I'm so excited to show you this. Air dry clay is such a fantastic craft medium and Das Wood Air Dry Clay is what I'm excited to share with you in this video. Das Wood is a wood paste containing real wood fibres and we can sculpt with it and let it dry naturally just like our regular air dry clay. When we cut into the wood clay you can really see the wood fibres. Like air dry clay it is still soft and easy to handle but easily rolls into a smooth ball like this. Hopefully through the video you'll be able to get a sense of the actual texture of this so I can take my rolling pin and roll it. You can see that it might feel a little bit drier than regular air dry clay and it cracks a little easily at the edges but it comes back together nice and easily still when you push it and form it together. In this video I'll share a few clay projects with you and demonstrate some options of how we can create with this das wood. Dragging a knife through this isn't quite as smooth as when we do it with air dry clay, but shapes can be easily cut and then smoothed out. You can add a slight bit of water on your fingers and smooth it or tap it as I do in this way, or smooth it down with an implement such as a knife. Cutters and cookie cutters do work really well with this type of clay. A little bit later in the video I'm going to share the properties of this das wood with you and also do the drop test. So as you can see we can easily cut shapes in this way with the das wood. In my clay projects I like to use the score and slip method so I'm just doing a little test of this and I'll show you the results later. My favourite way to use this clay is to sculpt it and smooth it with my hands. If the clay starts to feel a little bit dry, just add a little bit of water to your fingers and then bring it together once again. And just like air dry clay, it does get all over your hands like this when you really work it between those hands. But that's all part of the fun. Does anyone else here love clay hands? I've rolled my clay into a ball and I'm going to see how well it forms into a pinch pot. So you put your thumb in and squeeze around the edges just like this but as you can see the edges like to crack because of those little wood fibres inside but they're easily smoothed back together. You can add just a little bit of water to your fingers and smooth these down and then I'm going to extend the pinch pot with a thick coil like this just adding this time a little bit of water to the edge as I'm going to smooth those edges together to try and form our pot. At the moment it doesn't feel quite as easy as with regular air dry clay but that could mainly be because I'm used to the air dry clay and how that works so I suppose if I use this a little bit more I'll get even more used to it like you will too. As you can see here, any cracks that do appear do smooth together really quite nicely and I have been able to form a cute little pot that I'm really pleased with. Time to go and wash my hands. I leave my pot to dry for several days. Das wood is water-based, solvent-free and dermatologically tested, so as far as I'm concerned it's perfectly safe to use. Silicon moulds are definitely great friends with this clay. It sculpts and smooths really quite freely and so it responds really well to the silicon moulds and you can just push it in nice and firmly like I do here. I like to make my own silicon moulds and I've made many of them over here on my channel but you can purchase them really quite cheaply and easily from lots of different craft stores. This one here is for cake decorating so you might be able to find them in different areas of the store too. I like to push the fresh clay into the moulds and then take it out immediately. You can do it as I am doing here, really nice and gently. Start with a simple shape if you're a beginner, although something like this takes quite a bit of filling and then quite a bit of fiddling to get it out, but you can mould that clay back together once it comes out of the mould. Because this clay has the real wood fibres in, it's perfect for restoration projects. So if a part had broken off a piece of furniture like this, I could easily replace that piece with this wood clay. Also because when this clay is fully dry, it can be carved and sculpted into with anything like this chisel. I quickly got this chisel out of the garage, I've not used it for a while, it really does need sharpening so don't follow my lead here. I do have gloves on but never work towards your hand like this but as you can see it does sculpt beautifully once dry. 
Let's make something else of the wood clay and what I often like to do with my clay projects is start off with a wire armature or some tin foil like this. Here I've crushed up some tin foil into a little bird shape. I like to make my tin foil a little bit smaller than the ideal finished piece and then you can take your clay and roll it out with a rolling pin or as I like to do I like to squish it between my fingers to flatten it out and then I just smooth this and blend this all over my tin foil into the shape required. Just taking my time with the process. Adding a little bit of water to my fingers again to smooth it out and adding and blending any extra clay where needed. You have plenty of working time with this clay and it really doesn't dry out that quickly. So it's perfect for these kind of sculpting projects. As I said at the beginning, it takes a little bit of time to get used to this different kind of clay, but it's definitely an enjoyable process. With something small like this, I've been able to cover the tin foil without any problems. Details can be added with any implement really quite easily at this stage. Hopefully you feel inspired to give this a go and I'll show you the results of how all these pieces turned out shortly. I'm really pleased with my wooden bird and I could use this as a little ornament but I'm going to turn it into something else. My pot that I made has now been drying for about six days and it's fully firm. You can hear it, sounds really hollow and it feels really light. And I'm so pleased literally no cracks have formed. This piece is now fully dry and my join on the other hand I'm not so convinced about and yes with a little bit of pressure but not to worry as my preferred way with this clay is to definitely use our fingers and sculpt just like I did with this bird you start off with a ball and then you use your fingers or a tool to shape that this then results in a much stronger form rather than having a join I made some wood clay beads to test out with my mini drill just to show you how well this works when we want to add a hole for any fixings or anything else, we're able to do this really easy after the clay is fully dried. And there we have our perfectly formed hole. I recommend using a jig or a clamp, not doing it with your fingers like I do, but I've been doing things like this for years. Or you may just think I'm a bit of a fool. <laughs> The clay once dry is really firm and so it sands really easily as well. Once you do sand it, it gives a really smooth finish and a slightly shinier feel to it. But there's no need to do this, you just can if you want to. You could leave it, as I often do, as the nice raw wood effect. Once dried you can of course paint the clay and I would suggest using acrylic paints for this. It's easy to paint the smoothed out clay but a little bit more tricky and you have to go over a couple of times if you're on the bare clay. As you can see from this video, the clay dries to quite a light wood colour. So here I added in a bit of water-based wood stain. I rolled it in till it was all the same colour and you can also use this to work into the clay while it's wet and then I'm adding a little bit of a wood effect with my scalpel here. This is something I'll show you a bit more of in another video. But as you can see, this is another way to give a bit more colour into the clay. I love him. My little bird is now fully dry and I decided to make him into a really cute display hook. I've cut two wooden pieces that I'm going to make the hook out of and I'm gluing this together with the DAS white glue. I've just started using this glue and it glues together all the different air dry clays really well. I'll just make sure I leave this to dry and fully set for at least 24 hours. Maybe I'll go one step further next time and actually blend this piece of wood into the little bird but I hadn't decided what I was turning the bird into and that's the beauty of these kind of projects is to just see what happens and go with the flow. I've added some paint and then I'm varnishing this up and I think it looks absolutely lovely and I can't wait to put it on my wall. And I'll definitely be making some more of these. What else would you turn this little bird into? Please comment below. We've done a cute project, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the properties of this DAS wood clay. I've taken a bead of fully dried DAS wood clay and dropped it in water. As you can see, first of all, the clay floats just like a piece of wood. 
and straight away you can see little bubbles appearing in the water and that hints that moisture is already being absorbed. I left the clay in there for two hours and as you can see it's really quite soft and soggy already. As expected with all air dry clay it absorbs the water right back again. And so because of that I wanted to see how much moisture evaporates from the clay. So I have 50 grams of DAS wood clay and 50 grams of air dry clay and you can see immediately that the DAS wood has a larger volume and that the air dry clay is much denser than the DAS wood. So when you get a packet of DAS wood, this is 700 grams, whereas the DAS air dry clay is one kilogram, and they're basically near enough the same size. And so to show you this, I'm pressing them into a mold, and you can see here that definitely that the air dry clay is more dense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry these out and see the weight of them once they are dried to see the difference in water that is evaporated in both of these. Using a piece of plastic I've turned these into something useful and I've let them dry fully. These are fully dry and you can see that the DAS wood is still larger. The air dry clay has gone from 50 grams to 38 grams losing 12 grams in total. The DAS wood has lost even more moisture altogether going from 50 grams to 31 grams so losing 19 grams in total, making it like a lovely light piece of wood. I thought that was really quite interesting so I hope that gives you a little bit more of an insight. You're probably wondering how brittle or strong this wood clay is, so here is the test. The little pot that I made earlier is fully dry and yes, really sturdy and robust, just as if it was made from a light wood. So to make this not absorb any water and to make it even stronger we can add some varnish over the top. This is a really glossy varnish or like with the little bird I made you can use a really matte varnish as well to protect it and to give it that finished look without it being shiny. So as you can hopefully see the properties of this clay are really quite impressive and I really love the fact that lots of moisture is evaporated and it leaves a nice lighter product. So if you do two pieces of the same size in original air dry clay and then the wood dust clay, the wood clay is considerably lighter. I really love using this and I hope it's inspired you and I will show you some more projects with this and of course lots more with the original air dry clay too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next creative video.